and That's just like we're asked on. that question as we're going live. Hey guys, <laughs> what's up? Scream. It's a microphone. It I get excited. It's seven a.m. Get excited. We're live. Take it easy, we're back. Take, let me turn this down. Since living at Brett's, I get up earlier every day. We just go live early in the morning, late at night. Yeah. You, you guys, guys are, are chucking out some content. Yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> have you noticed, Megan? Have you noticed the content? Yeah, no, this I is haven't. a true story. Yesterday, um, I'm just like looking at the, the, the videos I've got on my computer and Brett's like, oh, look at that one of me. I like that one. So I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. He goes, send it over. I went, well, I send it. You're going to put it online. Wait till tomorrow morning. Everyone in the world is asleep. It's nighttime here. Just wait till tomorrow morning. So, he, you know, he's bigger than me. He's quite intimidating. So he, he threatens me. I have to send him this clip. And he's like, it's good. I'm uploading it tomorrow morning. Three minutes later, it's on his Instagram. <laughs> He can't help himself. He just has to put it up instantly. Addicted. That's what happens when you get addicted. You know? Hey, you need to go prime time. Like you got to wait till the prime time and then you post and post and post. <laughs> Not Brett. Brett just goes hard <laughs> all the time. I am prime time. People Sprinter. Like Sprinter. Sprinter baby. Australian fans, you know? Mm. Yeah. That was, good, that was a good one though. That was Brett pretending to be the baby off the Nevermind cover. Did you see that one? Oh yeah, I did see I did that. See that. Mm, I think that. the best one was that I saw was the chair. The chair was just sitting chair. there and just goes boom into the water. <laughs> like who, who pulls the chair? Yeah, were you, are you sore? Are you sore after a couple of days doing resistance training? Yeah, had a resistance right training here. seminar oh, last night. Right yeah, guys, if anyone missed the resistance training seminar, you can actually uh, you can purchase the recording of that mm. on my on my website and soon to be on Brett's website hopefully. But you can go and purchase that. We'll stick a link in the. Uh, How'd it go? Amazing. It went yeah, really well. Last went really well, yeah. Nice. Really good, yeah. 50 people turned up and uh, great great questions along the way and good uh, information shared. So I think it went really well for the first time. It's good, man. I like and it. A couple of, couple of uh, influencers were on the on the pod. <laughs> Came in and had a look. An influencer. Looking shredded as opposed to what? When isn't Brett looking shredded? At 7 a.m., Kurt. Look at Kurt. <laughs> All right, Kurt, take us away. Athens World Cup. Let's go. Um, Let's get started. Before we get started on that, I've got a bit of sad news as well um, from the Australian swimming community, and that is that we lost uh, Ursula Carlisle, um, who obviously a pioneer of coaching in sports science in Australia. She passed away um, overnight at um, age 86. And for those uh, internationally that don't know, she's really the queen mother of, of swim coaching and um, obviously the, the wife of Forbes Carlisle, who, who's a legend in the sport as well. And um, you know, the pioneers of the Learn to Swim program um, where they started out in their own backyard and, and created that Carlisle name that's that's still a part of the club today. And uh, what a history and what a legacy she leaves in the sport. The first woman um, a swimming coach um, on an Australian team in Olympic history. Um, the first and still only female head coach of an Australian swimming team at the Commonwealth Games in 74 and, and the World Championships in 75. And, and obviously the highlights of guiding Shane Gould to that triple uh, Olympic gold medal and world record performance in Munich in, in 72. Also, um, Coach Gail, Gail Neal to um, the 400 IM gold there in 72 as well, in a, in a world record as well, and uh, part of the International Swimming Hall of Fame and life member of Swimming Australia as well. And obviously still now, the legacy of Carlisle lives on, and that's the home of Olivia Wunsch, where she learned to swim and, and still races for as well. And um, just got a, a, a nice, a really nice quote from her, um, from Ursula to finish off, and it's uh, no one cares about how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think uh, nobody cared more about the sport of, of swimming from learn to swim all the way through to the elite Olympic performance than than Ursula Carlisle. And so, uh, if you want more uh, uh, of a wrap on that story, hit the uh, Swimming World website. But yeah, it's uh, we lose um, you know the Queen Mother today, and it's, yeah, it's a sad day for swimming Australia. What what a legacy and what a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Um, Kurt, you can put the mic down a little bit because when you get excited, you kind of spit into it and it, and it cracks a little bit. But uh, I love the sentiments there today, mate. Uh, yeah, she was a legend, uh, legendary family. Yeah, it's sad to see that happen and, and uh, see her go. Um, but I think, I think she's left enough of a legacy where people are going to be talking about her and Forbes for many, many years. So. That's the pace clock. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, that was it too, Nate. It wasn't just the coaching; it was it's the sports science. They were the pioneers mm. of the sports science as well, and the, that learn to swim program mm. where they start in their backyard at Ride, and now you look at the Carlisle, um, the beast that is the Carlisle Club from learn to swim all the way through. Uh, I think they offer something like one point three million 
kids to swim a year or, or something like that. So crazy, crazy numbers that they do all the way through. So an yeah, absolutely beautiful look. article written by your father this morning. If, oh, yeah. if you haven't seen it, yeah. Um, yeah, hit the yeah hit the Swimming World yeah. website and yeah, um, and that'll be up. It's going yeah. up in the comments. It's in the newsletter as well. Yeah, that oh, is the uh, he is the uh, historian man. wizard of all things swimming Australia. So yeah, he did a fantastic job with that. Oh, what are you doing? You bring your bum mics and slapping. I'm, oh, I'm having a rough morning. <laughs> no, you're cramped next to you. Look at the size of your shoulders. Am I looking huge? Yeah, you're looking ripped, man. No, one you person got with... comments. That was Brett. I don't Brett. have any more muscles, man. I, after ripping that labrum, I haven't done a damn thing. Oh, wow. You can do legs. Don't see it leg day. I've just I've been running a lot, but that, uh, that kind of sucks. And some combat side stroke. <laughs> yeah. All right, side let's stroke. go live. What happened? What happened over the weekend? A lot of fast swimming, eh? Ooh. Yeah, we want to go to Athens. I, I think. Uh, well, really disappointing. We had sixteen World Cup records in Birmingham. <laughs> we had eight. Put the mic down. Oh, oh, what's going yeah, on there? Really excited. Slightly I'm well, I'm excited for this grading. I can't wait to grade these I, swimmers. We'll start in Athens and we start with the women because the women are on fire and serial killer, <laughs> killer McEwen, baby face killer. It doesn't matter what you call her. She's on an absolute <laughs> tear. And just get it's killer. She is a killer. And uh, and for those that don't know what, why would you call Kaylee McEwen a killer? Why is she a serial killer? It's because <laughs> You wouldn't know what she did if you lived next door to her. She's like everyone else. She gets anxious. She gets nervous. She has doubts. She's human. But once that whistle goes and she dives in the water for those backstroke events, there's an instant transformation. And, you know, she will end you. And she has been taking victims left, right, and center all year long. And 27 02 in the 50 back, what misses the world record by 0.04. 57.63 in the 100, misses the world record by 0.18, and then still backs up for a 206.02. Um, she just ticks every box, and, um, you know, those Burger King crowns are on her way. If she can do a triple-triple, gets an extra 30 grand, plus MVP at all three, that's another 36, plus uh, the overall women's champion. So at the moment, she's staring down the barrel of 166 grand, and doesn't she deserve every single cent of it? Uh, US too. We'll take that. Yeah, not bad cash, eh? She's looking good. She's looking good. She's uh, she's looking unbeatable. And it doesn't look like anyone wants to challenge her. There's no one really who wants to have a crack at her either, is there? No, there's no one really even close. There's not much competition. I think the closest mm. is that probably that 50 back. Um, she's just in a league of her, league of her own, and and uh, if you didn't see it, she's um one sixty minutes for in Australia. A really nice story um, about her her dad and her, you know how he keeps on inspiring her, and yeah, she lost her dad in you know just before the Tokyo Olympics. So she's on sixty minutes. Um, I'll try and put the link and send it through if you want to watch her story um, about how she got into swimming and and why she swims. Um, you just get to know her a little bit more, and she's just um like. Like Kurt said, she's got that killer instinct. I was talking to Bowley um, yesterday and I said, what is it, you know, what is it about her that is so good? Um, and he said, look, she's just uber focused. Like she's so focused. She can switch on, switch off like so easily. So, you know, that uber focus of when she has to race, she races hard and she does it. And then she's just like the girl next door as soon as she comes back out. So, she looks kind of unstoppable and it's just giving more and more confidence as she goes through those World Cups. So three from three, six from six now. So she didn't win, she didn't win the 200 IM, which I was surprised about. I think she got a bronze. Um, so Sydney Pickerham, I think, just got her in the uh, 200 IM. So she won that in um, Berlin, but missed it in Athens. So she quite didn't do four from four. But yeah, 60 minutes, uh, really cool article, uh, really mm. cool show. Sorry. Um, if you want to check it out about Kaylee, so she's. Oh, she is. <laughs> Very good king. That's, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's she's going to be wearing a lot oh, of like King crowns come next week in Budapest. That's for sure. She was Absolutely. one of the only people that actually like is going faster this week compared to being Everyone in Berlin. Else. You know, uh, overall the the times were generally a little bit slower. Slow. Uh, you can see some wear and tear on some of these people, especially these Chinese swimmers. I don't understand how they they they've been going. World champs, Asian Games, World Cup, World Cup, going to another World Cup. So it's um, yeah, you saw Chin with a little bit 
going a little bit slower in in all of his races, but not Kayla McCune. She's nearly uh, breaking world records at World Cup stops. People say Chin's consistent, but he added 0.8 in a week in the 100 breaststroke. Mm. That's like a lot of time, and he still won by over a second or something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe he's ramped up the training. and I wonder what the Chinese are doing in terms of their, their training plans, because I know Siobhan's literally going to have a week off after the World Cup, and then she's getting back at it. Like, like she hasn't had a break since last summer, like post. Well, she never really even had a break then because she missed Worlds with her injury. So she's kind of like on this... 20 month training plan with one week. She's going to go to Italy for a week next week. And is she then she's coming on the show. In, is she coming on the show in Italy or is she coming Look, on the show after? Italy? I, I can't, I can't speak for her. You have to talk with her and maybe it will do be straight after, but a pest before she goes to Italy, or maybe it'll be yeah. after a week holiday in Italy. I don't think she's going to go live from Italy on a holiday with her sister. Yeah. She will come on the show. She will talk to you about she's how awesome. a week off now. Really? Yeah. A week off now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she's just done World Asian Games, three World Cups. She, she's allowed a week off. I mean, what, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you know you've, got to have a, you've got to have a week, right? Three days. Three days. Yeah, I want to, I want to talk a little <laughs> bit about the, the women here at the World Cup. And they've been a highlight. And the ultimate flex in swimming is, well, I guess the first ultimate flex in swimming is winning. But the second biggest flex you can possibly do is consistency. And these, when you're talking Kaylee McEwen, um, Sarah Herstrom, Siobhan, um, Zhang Yufei. It doesn't matter. We said before, you're swimming on the Gold Coast. You're swimming in Melbourne. You're swimming in the Backyard Pool. You're swimming in the Hudson River. You're swimming at Kelly Slater Surf Ranch or in Berlin Athens Woodfest. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're going to be fast and they're going to win. And if they don't win, then they'll get second. And if they don't get second, they'll get third. And You've seen it from the big four, and they've just been a, a pleasure to watch during this whole World Cup. And um, Sarah is a great example that 24 9 7 50 fly, insane swim, third time sub 25 this calendar year. Um, and I get the 50s um, for someone like Sarah um, at 30 years of age, and I would be the first to say, um, you know, I started a question, especially in the last pod, about how long can she sustain the 100s? And she didn't win either the 100 free or the 100 fly there um, in Athens. But those performances were just phenomenal. 100 fly, she goes a 56.9, finishes runner-up to Yafe, who went a 56.06. Five races later, this was wild, to get runner-up behind Siobhan in the 100 free and go 53.3. Like, she's like out of... Um, Dragon Ball Z, like when you see a um, <laughs> character there, what is Sarah's final form? You think, oh, she's super saiyan. She, this, is, this is as good as she's going to get. Like she's reached a peak. And then she goes again and goes up another form again. And I, I, I just don't know where the ceiling is for her right now. Like she looks brilliant, absolutely brilliant there in Athens as well. Oh, there we are. Yeah, 56.9, 105. That was like the, for me, that was the race of the meat, right? Sometimes at these World Cups, you do get uh, like the best of the best swimmers. We had Maggie McNeil, Olympic champion, world champion, Sarah Sostrom, Tori Husk. I mean, I think Louise Hansen was even in there. She's a, a hell of a swimmer. So that Zhang Yufei, Zhang Yufei 56 0 to clean Sarah, everyone's yeah. clock again. Did she go the time that Sarah first broke the world record? 56 06. Back in Rome, that's what Sarah broke the world record with at, at like 16 years old. That's a fun little fact. It was 56.06. Kurt, what did Django yesterday? Uh, 56.06. There you go. Match the time. Match the time from 09. Oh. Young, young Sarah in the X-Glide. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's Sarah. one thing about she Sarah was... as well, and I think uh, what I'm most impressed about her 100s, she swims them. She makes that last 25 so good. She doesn't blow all her cookies in that first 50, and she's, she's racing it smarter. And I'd like to see some of the veterans – do that as well. like busting yourself to 75 and trying to hang on. I don't think is a strategy as you age in the sport, especially in this women's 100 free, 100 fly. And did you get the feeling that they were, they were a carbon copy of both races, the fly and the free, just the brilliant final 25 put her right there. And that's why she, you know, two world-class performances, two, two second placings. Yeah. I love seeing her do the hundreds now as well. How come uh, can't get, can't get enough of Um, on Instagram and said she had a disappointing meet. Why was she so disappointed, do you think? I mean, it was pretty slow. I... Slow, but I think it's just 
I, I think, think I, well, well, I think swimmers fatigue, are obviously perfectionists, right? You know, we all like to swim fast, but I don't think it's that disappointing. You know, like I, I feel like, yeah, you went slower, but a it's half all, a second slower in a 50. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all experience. So she's had time off. Um, and that's obviously maybe a little bit of training, maybe, the conditioning isn't isn't as good as she wants it, and I don't think you kind of have to defend yourself in that. You don't have to defend yourself in every swim. Um, Which event was our fifty free breakdown? Was that was that at Athens? Yeah, that was a it was a decent swim. She added half a second from the week before. She went yeah. four one in Berlin, four six here. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, that's yeah four. mate, you mm. say it was a decent swim. You literally the title of the video is I think. Kate can be faster. And then you start off with saying, why is Kate not faster? And then basically said her start isn't great. She can't hold her stroke great. She shouldn't be taking a breath. You, 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 a you, tempo. You're, you're quite critical, actually, Brett. Do you think she watched it? I think that's probably why she posted it as a disappointing me. And her sister beat her, too. Her sister beat her in the hundreds. <laughs> Her sister was there, too? I didn't even know her maybe, sister was there. Yeah, Bronte swam oh, like 53. Yeah, six, I think. Yeah, Bronnie beat her in yeah. 100. Oh, I yeah, wonder if so... she kind of, like, when, when Kate took a break, she was, like, almost on top of the world, and she comes back and there's all these new girls that are, like, stupidly fast now. I wonder if that's anything to do with it. Like, you know, 52 is still a novelty, like, five years ago, and now 52 is an, an, an expectation. Like, you yeah. know, what did, what did uh, Simone and Penny win the Olympics in? Like, 52-7? That's not even getting a sniff at a medal now. So, like, I don't know, maybe... maybe that's that's not helping. Like her perception, fifty three five years ago, she'd have been like, yeah, nice little fifty three, um, and now it's like fifty three yeah, eight is crit, just like she's a harsh critic on herself, and that's why she's she's, she's good. So good. Yeah. And you take a look at these results, and this is what I'm talking about about Sarah as um, as well. She's just swimming smart. She makes that final fifteen fast, and you see what Siobhan's like fifty two five five. Um, what Sarah can come back in is just. Electric, like look at that twenty, what twenty seven three eight. She's only seven one hundredths of what Siobhan came back the second fifty. Yeah, but- and if we saw the hundred fly result as well, she came back her second lap in a twenty nine nine nine, which was faster than you face. So um, but this is always the thing. Like I've seen rankings of back, like the fastest back ends of all time, and it, it's completely irrelevant because it's like me and Brett could get in the pool right now and some hundred yards and go out in thirty nine and come back in like twenty two. It doesn't, doesn't. Maybe not Brett. He's he's, he's a bit older than me, but um. <laughs> um but like the point I'm making is it doesn't matter how fast the second 50 is if the first 50 isn't that good. And ultimately, Siobhan beat Sarah by 0.8 there. It doesn't matter how fast like Sarah come back in. Sarah could have gone out in 30 point and she'd have had the best back end in the whole race. She could have she could have gone out in 40 point and come back in 24.9 because she's that fast or 24.5. Mm. So it's, it's, it's kind of like it's, I'm, I'm not disagreeing and saying her back end isn't great. And she's still putting herself in the race. She's still coming second at a world class meet. But, you, you know, right. she's... If she came back in 24 9, she would have won that event. Not sure. if she went out in 40 points, she'd have gone 104. She does submit smart. Though. Like, she does yeah, submit. She's smart. She's, you know, she's, she's not, she smart. could go out faster than anyone in that field. Absolutely. So and now I have yeah. questions about Sarah. Is, is yeah, she, she the best sprint, female sprinter of all time? Is she the best sprinter full stop, full time? Yeah. Oh, female. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. ever. Male or female? Just the best woman. I don't know. I need to see the stats in front of me. It's very early in the morning. Because I've got to get all the stats in front of me. It's definitely stacking up. More. She's right there with the best of all time. I she's, think it's uh, always changing though, right? She's you swimming know, like, longer than most most women mm-hmm. in history too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think she's stopping. So. What I, mean, I was surprised. I didn't know that Siobhan swam 50 breaststroke. She yeah. went 30 point. Like what a, what a rock star. <laughs> she's she she come third at the Asian Games in 30.3. She used to be Asian record holder short course. She used to do it at ISL. She's yeah. been 29 short course. She's, Did she you know do some breaststroke before? Sonny swims a little breaststroke too. He put it on his Instagram today. Yeah, I raced Steve West, <laughs> Masters World Record holder yeah, yesterday, beating by three seconds from the push. Yeah. Um, but but Siobhan's, Siobhan's first national record was 16 years old. She swam a 200 breaststroke. I think it was 226 oh. short course, which is like, look, world, world standards is not, not electric, but in Hong Kong standards, it's massive. It was her first ever um, Hong Kong national record. Her first ever Olympic qualification was in the 200 meter medley. And actually, she never swum the 200 medley at the Rio Olympics because when she got there, they sort of like deck entered her in the 200 freestyle and she ends up making the semi final. And then her coach is like, Whoa, you've made the semi final. And the 200 IM heats her on that day. Let, like, let's just drop the 200 IM and do the semi final, make the final. And then she didn't make the final and didn't swim the 200 IM. And who knows? Maybe she would have a 200 IM legacy if she'd actually swum that, that heat that morning. But 
She's uber talented. You know, she spit 5,600 butterfly long course on a relay for, for Hong Kong before. She's also spit 106 0, 100 breaststroke long course for Hong Kong before. So just put that in perspective 56 9 fly, 106 0 breaststroke, 52 0 freestyle. I think a PB for 100 backstroke. And she won't mind me saying this is about 115. Um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Fresh stroke and I am. Was anyone else cool, a little though. bit like, like um, upset that she raced the 50 breaststroke before the 100 free? Because you're just like, oh, I just want to see her get the 100 free fresh and see it was how 14 minutes, go. by the way. 14 minutes from the 50 breaststroke to the 100 freestyle. Yeah. She comes second. She got beaten by Ruta by 0.1. World record holder Ruta Melatite beat Siobhan by 0.1 in the 50 breast. And then Siobhan went and won the 100 freestyle in 52.5. How long did she need to get under 52? Did she need 16 minutes? How long did I, she I think she was about, about five minutes too short, yeah. Five minutes off. She should have. Two, two, well, she's two got one more turn around. Hmm? She's got one more stop. Yeah, well, obviously she dropped the 400 here and you just thought, and then I forgot about the 50 breast um, for a moment. But be, yeah, it'd be great to see her just have one crack, one more crack at that 100, just fresh and, and good to go there in Budapest. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of people that had fast turnarounds this weekend. Katie Grimes did a 1500. Yeah, she did everything. And she, she jumped in, back. did the two back, went <laughs> 2080 or something, something absolutely insane. Do you think, how about this for a theory? Do you think if she doesn't do the 400 and doesn't do the 50 breast and she swims a 51, she just puts all the pressure on herself? So a coach and athlete are trying to avoid the pressure going in the Olympics. So they just stick events in right before her big swims. Do you think that's the theory? I, I don't think it's as... as, as you think fought, they're scared? I don't think it's as fought out as that. I think... Um... You know, like she has to swim three events. You have to swim three events in these World Cups. And I think the 400 free took a lot out of her on day one last time. So what, what other event does she have? She, so like the 400 free again would have made her really tired. So she has to add one more event in, which naturally is the 50 breaststroke. And, you know, from a, from a fatigue perspective, doing a one length breaststroke versus an eight length freestyle is great. But it's 14 minutes before the 100 freestyle. Why do you have to swim three events? To get on the um, points, points for that. For can the, she not swim the world record pace in the 200 at the... 50 and 100 mark or just yeah but her third 50 yeah, was, was way quick. too slow it was like 29 mid it just it just wasn't good enough the third 50 unfortunately what about the 100 fly why didn't she swim that no she won't do the 100 fly no why doesn't she uh she only ever races it for hong kong relays but now she's on the breaststroke internationally she does breaststroke on the relay because they have okay freestylers she just she, she's like their chameleon like whatever they need they're lacking a breaststroke or a fly girl she'll just she'll just step up and and get involved with it for the, for the team. She's trying really hard to win events and not post 51s. Is that what's happening? And she just won a load of money, and she's got another stop. Uh, Is there a world record bonus on the World Cup? Do we know? Surely. It's probably Surely like not for World Cup, dollars or some that's ridiculous. <laughs> world, world Aquatics don't like giving swimmers money for world records. Anyway, it's been fantastic. Kaylee, um, Siobhan, Sarah. And Great, Kurt. A, B, yeah. C What's the grade? Oh, those Come on four, now. Big four, all A plus. Yes. All, all A plus. Yeah, they've been. They've oh, been he's the got it. He's got it easy thing. today. And as good as the those those women have been, I thought the men have been. The men were quite flat um, overall in. Uh, oh, going some um, You know, Dragon was Dragon. We we discussed that. He does the triple again, fifty-one two. Um, he's under world record, record pace in the two in the first seventy-five. I think. Um, he, 75 split. He's got the 75 split under world record pace. He's what? more aggressive in the. He was. You saw it in the 100. He's very aggressive. Still six, but very aggressive in that 100. Got after it a lot more. And and second in the 50 goes up another another notch there. You just get yeah, the really feeling that Petey came into like the light on the last spot. He's on track, isn't he? He done what? Don't you think he came into the light in this meet? Into the, into the light. Yeah, into the light in this meet. Don't but, you think so, Petey? What does that mean, Brett? What do you mean he come into the light? He came into the light at this meet. I think it was, you know, finally Petey came into the light and we saw we saw the real Petey. He was, he was in the light or into the light? No, he was into the light. I thought into came, the light. He as came the into the light says. and uh, we mm. saw Petey back again. It was good. Don't you think? He, he put comes... up a nice little scripture on his Instagram, I think it was. Huh. So, yeah, that's right. Didn't didn't you tell me he found uh, he found Jesus with, yeah, he's, uh, with um, Kyle Chalmers? Him and Kyle. That's good. <laughs> Make it, don't make no, me laugh. Like, like <laughs> don't joke. make me laugh. That's serious. That's what happened. Wasn't <laughs> it's basically it? what happened. Yeah, yeah. Him, and, him and Kyle. Kyle, Kyle was like going <laughs> to go to church, and he did, and he loved it. And yeah. the training that's a good, he goes to church. That's a good point in the comments as well. You could win a car in the. Uh, it used to be able to win a car in the World Cup. I remember the, when the World Cup used to be in Sydney, sponsored by Honda. And they had a Honda car on pool deck. 
I know it used to piss me off because I knew I'd never win it and they'd give it to somebody else. And the car was on the deck just staring at me all the time. And it was just like, why? The, I'm never going to win that car. And they just had it there staring at me. What were your free events, Brett? You saw the 53 star. What was your other two events to win the car? He didn't have to do three back then. And they brought that in after me because I'd only swim one event. You mean they didn't have aqua points back then, Brett? <laughs> no, no, Did I'm, you swim like fly or something? Did you do like 50 fly? Or? A little, little dabble here and there. Yeah, yeah a little dab. Yeah, a little yeah, dab. Nice. Do a 50 yeah. fly. 23 8 was my best time. 50 fly. I would have beaten Chad yeah, Flow and Cody Simpson on the weekend. <laughs> Look at the flat. 23 8. 23 8. Huh? Did they get under that? What they got? I went 4 1. 4 1. I well, beat still that. on the breast drag. I just want to stop um, with that 200 and um, Dongzi Hao. Ding dong in that 200 breaststroke. He's five. Can we say that? Ding dong. 32. Ding dong. Five. I don't think I we say can that say that all the time. Yes, I do. He's just thrown himself right in there. And so, um, you know, between Dong, <laughs> Purple Dragon, and um, Zach Stubble T. Cook. Uh, well, yeah, he doesn't get a, he doesn't, uh, uh, an abbreviation. You just go the full name on him, but <laughs> Ding Dong, and you give you give Zach Stubble T. Cook the full name. <laughs> Who is Ding Dong? <laughs> what about Zach? Give, give, give Zach something. Man. It's actually yeah, Subletty Cook. Let's call him Subletty Cook. Yeah. Zach, Stubbles. I want to go get a coffee with you. Just I'm a big coffee Stubbles. fan. I know you like your but coffee. Yeah, Let's go get Dong a coffee, is Zach. definitely a big standout and definitely a name to um to remember heading towards Paris. Uh, Sates wasn't Sates good again? He was loved his kids. Did he fracture South his Africa? Wrist? Africa. Yeah, he fractured his wrist it. on the one fly allegedly. Allegedly. What in Athens? In Athens. So the first day he wins the hundred fly, he gets uh, Michael Andrew and Cody Simpson on the touch. He, he just gets in on the finish. He's yeah. a bit short. We actually analysed this, and um, yeah, he, he fractures his wrist. And then in, the next day he wins the two hundred iron, the two hundred butterfly, new PB on the two hundred fly, and then the next day he gets silver in the four hundred iron. And actually, two weeks in a row, he has got silver in the four hundred iron by less than point one. So like, it was, excuse me, point zero eight. He got beaten by this meet, and then last meet he was beaten by point zero six. How how crap is that in a 400 iron to keep getting beaten by under point one? What are you doing wrong, Brett? <laughs> He's got a fractured wrist, for God's sake. You'd be it happy. Must have been a hairline it? fracture because he didn't look like he troubled him nah. whatsoever. First time yeah. fly, 200 fly, 200 iron. Consistent. Like one to said, just loses the 400 iron by fingernail to Bucci. That's um, to dirty he finally got a win. The Bucci. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care about fractures. No. They just keep going. You, they, you're not to get out different of, South Africa. You can't get out of training unless you literally get decapitated in South Africa. Like it, you know, break your wrist in training. You keep going. You keep pushing. Keep and going. his uh, his countryman and young guy Peter Coetzee, yeah. he, he he won the two yeah. back. He beat Chacon. That was a that was a great swim. Get Couldn't, a splits up. Get a splits up on that night. Huh? He's good, Coetzee. Yeah, isn't he? First two hundred back. Second hundred back. Second in the fifty back. Get a split sub of that 200 back. Watch the last 50. It's 28-5. He comes flying past Chacon. And Chacon, Chacon could be the, the best swimmer in the world right now, but Peter just flew past him. Whew! It's because he's wearing that American cap. Oh, he got silver. Wow. He ditched the American cap. No, no, he's no, still he's on, still it. on he it. it. He loves it. Loves it. He's still wearing it. I saw it. Apparently, it's not his girlfriend's. Apparently, he traded it at World Juniors. And it, whenever he can wear We've it, he wears that. it. Yeah. He loves it. Here he is. There's your splits. Who doesn't yeah, love it? 29. Look at that. 0. 0.6 better than Chacon. He was down by 0. 0.4 with 50 to go. And he just flew past. That's a good swim, isn't it, Nate? It's a great swim. It's... And actually, Chacon, when he won in Berlin, he was back really fast, like 28.5 or something on his last 50. Um, his second 50, 30.1. That's a big difference. Like usually, turn it back, you want your three last you know your three fifties consistent 30.1 29 7 28 9 you just got faster Descended. you know Should without you without russia in this event it's this is a wide open event on the men's side next year i mean other than ryan murphy doesn't look like reloff's going to be in there you know well, uh, i've got some good news out of russia as well breaking news oh some good news um, <laughs> it looks like they're they're this week they're back in they are. So he has come in and said that they don't want to punish or sanction athletes for their um, for the acts of their officials or government. So Good. I don't know how Rilov that's going to affect him with his history, but definitely the likes of Klim, obviously 100, 300 back, Chikanova and the 200 breast, they're a big chance. And then what's um, what's Vlad? Is Vlad, is Vlad still Warzov? going around? And, 
Vlad was meant to oh, come. Oh, you're going to swim with Vlad he, today, weren't no, you? No, he was meant to come. Ra- he, I was invited up to, to, to LA to swim with him today, but then we said, come in the backyard, race me and Brett. But apparently he's got the in-laws round, so he can't come down. Oh, he can't do the backyard throwdown. He's got Vlad, the in-laws Vlad round, Vlad yeah. doesn't want to be beaten today. Bring huh? the in-laws. Bring, bring them along. Yeah, they can come and cheer. Yeah, they can come. Hold the cheer squad. By the way, I'm going to beat Brett in a 25 freestyle and go in the backyard. <laughs> I'm really worried because... I'm worried he's going to kick me out. I'm standing in his, I'm standing in his, yeah. in his house and I'm just worried he's going to oh. kick me out. And, is it push like, or dive? Push. Because no, look, Brett doesn't like getting off the blocks. There's no knees. blocks outside. Do you see a block out there? <laughs> we could go and get blocks, but he doesn't like blocks. So we have to go like his, his rules from the push. He actually, last night, we've got some, I'm going to send this to, to Nate because this is brilliant. It's going to be He close. tried to put on his Olympic suit from the year 2000 because mm. he, he was trying to find to ways me? to beat me. <laughs> and he, yeah, he you're really, suiting up? He, he really went went as all out trying to beat me and he you know he put this suit on nate i'm going to send you this right now all right yeah can't wait wow this is going to be fun let's get this that, is, look mate, like kurt get right that now. rating up sonny get that rating up whatever kurt's got on that's what i look like nate put this on the screen right now this picture okay jesus <laughs> oh my god keep it pg for god's sake this is not a men's suit by the way it's a woman's suit he got a woman's cut back in the day didn't you brett <laughs> did you i really? actually did get a woman's cut because they they, they didn't quite the smile on your face that all look like kurt right there he put those women's glasses on that's kurt handsome <laughs> are you racing in that is there a back oh, shot i've got a video of the back oh, did you even are you, did you even zip that up I couldn't do. I couldn't zip it up. It was too yeah, big. Nah. My back's too big. I remember those aqua blades. Yeah, Damn. I was the only one that raced in an aqua blade in Sydney 2000 because they brought the shark skin out. I hated the shark skin. I didn't want any part of it. So I said, I like "Make them. me an aqua blade." They said, "Well, we only have aqua blades in women." So I said, "Make me a women's cut." So I swam the Olympics in a women's cut, and I actually swam like a woman at the Olympics in a women's <laughs> cut. So it didn't make the final. Sad. Shark skin, oh, mate. Goodness, didn't, didn't make the final. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing at your finish thirteen? I'm not sure. Why are we laughing, Megan? Uh, I think makes me. Oh yeah. Uh, check on was there about Rapsus was consistent, um, and then you go on to these are all the D grades, all the Ds. Yeah, yeah what do they I, get? Grades. I about Michael Andrew and Isaac Cooper and how I find they're you know they're very similar in what they do and um, you know. Andrew, what, first in the 50 free, first in the 50 back. Um, he should have won the 100 fly, shouldn't he? Just that final 10 probably let him down. He admitted that himself. Um, third in the 50 fly. And then Isaac Cooper had a great meet as well, like second in the 50 fly. I know we gave him a bit of stick. He came in and did the – he did race the 100 back and he swam in a mixed relay as well for his race. So he's getting some more 100 back experience there. And Yeah, so he must have been listening to you. He was like, ah, that Kurt Hansen guy, he was yelling some shit at me about the 100-back stroke. I might as well do it. You know, he's right. got to start training. Paris coming up. It's right around the corner. But at least he made his 50 fly better. Like, I don't know. I'm happy to see him him race it. Didn't he get beat by in the 50 fly by someone who came on and and went on a rant after that? What what happened? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Egypt. I just want to talk about Cooper for a second. Can he swim breaststroke, this kid? Because Isaac second Cooper, the 53, second in the 50 fly, third in the 50 back. No, because he's not Michael Andrew. Michael Andrew is better and way more versatile and way more experienced and can do all four strokes. And Isaac Cooper can't. And that's why they're not that similar in any way. Oh, mm. gee, I don't think there's two swimmers that are more, more similar, surely. Yeah, what's they're Isaac Cooper's 29 PB? Is he top 10 of all time? How many times has he no, gone sub two minutes or sub 158 or sub 156? How many national like records does he hold in breaststroke? Because oh Michael Andrews is oh the wow. best American breaststroker of all time. Oh and wow. Isaac Cooper, the sprint backstroker, is being compared to him. What a ridiculous statement. Oh, wow. Oh, I think they're the same old. I think they're a similar mold. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's stubborn. That's stubborn. I like that. He's only 19. I, I see a lot. And I think they get all, I think they see it as well. I think they're, they're the new BFFs we, we, you know, we didn't know we knew we needed in our How lives. tall is he? Isaac oh, Cooper is not very tall. Yeah, he's that's like, what I'm saying. Like for he's exactly the same height as Mike Andrew. Oh, you <laughs> no, mean six, think... six four or something? Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely, definitely not the same mold. Six foot. Same mold. He's not over no. six foot. He's not. He's five eight. But it was good to see the Aussies swimming. The they were the only country really to uh, do some uh, mixed relays. So oh, not, nothing relays special. There? Yeah, there were some relays. They didn't do nothing. It wasn't crazy times. The splits, I'm not too sure if you can get them up. They weren't crazy, but they're in the really competitive country to do um, some mixed relays. So 
Yeah. Obviously just trying to get practice. experience. Yeah. Which is really good. Good to see. I liked um, it. And then uh, Cody, man, like, and I'll be the first to say, like I questioned it last week about, is he, should he be better off training or better off racing? And I think um, off the back of what he showed in Berlin, that was questionable, but I'm so stoked for him to step up, um, you know, equal second there and that hundred fly, he's fastest qualifier in the hundred free as well. But, um, you know, a little bit slower, slower in the final. In the final. But to see him the in season there, PB was, though, was a big step, fly, right? Big step. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just off. I think it was just off his PB in that hundred fly. So I think it's a good confidence booster for him. I think swimming with with Cody, I think he swims off confidence, um, and I think he likes to get that you know under his belt. And I think he's going to need yeah quite a you know quite a bit of confidence heading into next year because that hundred fly is going to be there's you know four or five of them. Yeah, um, and there's only two spots. So, like, that is going to be one of the races. And and can he go, you know, top six for that 100 freestyle? He's obviously got a little bit more to improve on. So, you know, the, I think the biggest thing for anyone is racing, getting faster from heat to final. You mm -hmm. know, that's the best thing as a swimmer I think you can learn is being able to get faster from the heat to the final. You never really want to go slower. So that's a that's, bit of a learning point. That's actually, like, something he hasn't been good at since he's – started this little transition to swimming well, again. Yeah, Mex called him out last week on it at well. all. He said in Berlin his heats weren't good enough and they weren't. Yeah. And um Th you know, that being said, were, I mean brilliant in Athens. Going to going to in season P B is a PB, good yeah. a good sign. Like he brought that hundred fly back really well. He's got a tremendous kick on the way home. Mm. It wasn't just a really a, good turn. It was point one four of his best. His best is fifty one seven eight. He went fifty one nine two. That's like even better. Like, that's really close. And then he PB'd in the 100 freestyle, went from 49.1 to 48.9. So yeah. he went 48? Yeah, 48.99. Yeah, 99. Damn, dude. I mm. didn't know. He was yeah. first seed into the final and then got swallowed up by wow. swallowed up by Chacon and Dylan. He's got, a, he's got a little bit more easy speed to get there. Like his 50 fly was quite slow. Didn't make the final. I was actually surprised with that. So hopefully he'll get a little bit more easy speed. You forget Obviously needs big. a bit of taper. At least I forget how big of a superstar he really is. You know, I just I saw him on Instagram and it was like twenty two thousand seven hundred and fifty four likes. I was like, Jesus Christ! He's got like five point four million followers. Twenty two thousand people are clicking the like button on this thing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, Solid. anyone else? Who else are we talking who, about? So what's the grades? What, what's the grades there? Who got who got what? What did Super we, Dragon uh, get? Uh, we'll save the grades for the end because there's another part I want to talk about um, that I All thought. All right, go on. Uh, was a big <laughs> we get distracted, don't we? <laughs> on the last night. So that was the mental health aspect of, of sport and the mental health aspect of swimming. And um, in modern times, breaking down that stigma that's involved with it and to see Sydney Pickram take out the 200 individual medley. And, um, you know, she's had some very public um, battles with mental health over the last few years and just that, paralyzing depression and anxiety that's um, really taken a hold of her and, you know, been a, a big, a big trouble that she's had to overcome. And it's been fantastic to see her, you know, get back and, and take a win there um, as well. And we've seen, um, you know, through with Adam Petey as well, his, his battles with alcoholism and depression and Kate Campbell's been very um, vocal and upfront as well about her battles with clinical depression as well. And Dressel. Um, and yeah, Dressel, of course. And then to see um, Abdul Rahman Same, the Egyptian, that you know, take the fifty fly, and w we can talk about um, our geopolitical opinions and stuff in a minute. But firstly, for him um, to come back from what he has been through, and you know, he had a suicide attempt um, in March last year. Um, obviously, former um, Louisville alumni and uh, you know, an NC two A champ. And he was in a coma for two days, and to come back from that um, back to racing, I think he's in. I think he's training up there at Notre Dame now. Um, but just a, a remarkable story for him, and then to, to take that victory, and then with the interview on pool deck to come out and you know say that he's been receiving death threats um, online for his support of Palestine. Um, I think it was it was nice. It was refreshing to see. This is this is the World Cup. This is you know these are world issues. And it's obviously affected him quite badly. And um, you've seen a lot of Muslims, especially based in America, um, have seen some, you know, some backlash um, for their support of Palestine. And uh, it's the same with um, Hafnawi as well. Um, he, he received a fair bit online. And, 
you know, you're going to get those trolls and it's, that's, that's some heavy stuff when you're getting death threats. But I think it was great to see Michael Andrew right next to him as well. We saw Michael Andrew earlier in the meet um, do a bit of a shout out for, for Israel. And like I said, it's a, the geopolitical and humanitarian concerns there um, in Israel and Palestine and in Gaza, it's, um, it's not black and white. It's not good versus evil. It's very complicated. It's been going for over a lifetime. Um, there's a lot of complexity and it's more than just, you know, trash talking and, and comment sections. So um, I think it's good. Yeah, it's good for the sport. And um, I'm glad he, he got out and, and said his piece. Well, look, I don't, I don't think anyone has an issue with anybody supporting the people of Palestine. I think what they're uh, having an issue with is um, supporting Hamas and the way that Hamas has um, handled the situation, uh, you know, last week where they came out and just slaughtered people, uh, women and children. I think that's what people have the issue with. And um, I, I, I've spoken to people from Israel, obviously had Yoav Brak on the podcast, who's a three-time Israeli Olympian. And um, he has nothing but love for the people of Palestine, but he condemns the way that Hamas came out and um, slaughtered, you know, Israelis. So I think that's where the issue is. And I think um, some of these guys are coming out and putting some things on social media that is very um, insensitive, inappropriate, maybe. And they've just got to be careful with what they put out there. It's not nobody is saying that they shouldn't have love for people generally and nobody should be murdered everybody knows that nobody should be killed there shouldn't be war we know that but the way that this thing is being handled is is very 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 poorly and so um that's that's where a lot of the issues are i think in, in terms of supporting that type of thing so well what's even more uh interesting is world aquatics kind of seems like they just like made up a fake quote for him in their article it really? just yeah, it was like a completely different quote. I don't know if I'm the only one that saw that, but I mean the the pro Palestine um, pro Palestine propaganda machine is going crazy right now because of this Egyptian guy. And you can just go on Twitter and look at any World Aquatics post, and every single post underneath it for hundreds of posts is about how they've taken all all the pictures off of him. Blah blah blah. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But the quote that they that they quote in the article about the recap of the swim meet yesterday doesn't talk about that at all. And his quote has it just sounds like someone actually made the whole thing up. Mm. I wow. I find that very interesting, especially since the mm -hmm. World Aquatics has a they have a very strong history with a lot of Muslim countries. You know, uh, like we're going to Doha in a in a couple of months to do World Championships. Um, yeah, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. Well, now you've confused me. I don't know what you're saying about it. Now I'm like, what are we talking about here? Are we uh, is there someone making well, stuff? Well, I think up everyone's afraid politics? of saying the wrong thing, and that's the complexities, especially in organ in an organizational term. And a hundred percent. When you um, when you live in the Western world, obviously there's a uh, it's a very pro Israeli sentiment, and and when you go to the Middle East, it's a very pro Palestinian sentiment, and um, and there's everything in between. I think for for us, um, maybe it's a, when you don't have any skin in the game, it's maybe a, a, a little bit easier to sit back and and just kind of see both sides go at it. But it's not, like I said, it's not. There's no there's no winners in this thing. It's 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 not black and white. It's not goodies versus baddies. It, it's really complex, and it's you know there's no easy way out of it. And that's why it's been going for seventy five plus years and with no end in sight. But um, just yeah. I, you know, I think what Sami said was fair enough. If you're getting death threats online, and um, you know, you, you speak out, you speak out about it, and, and put it out there. And same with Huff Nui as well, who's I think he started a fundraiser online for um, for some Palestinians as well. So um, yeah, it's there's people. It's, yeah. War sucks, man. It's awful. It's freaking yeah. horrible. There's children and women dying on both sides. And it's not going to get any better anytime soon, I don't think. Not that I know anything no, about what's wrong. going on there because I don't never been there, don't know anything. But it doesn't and look also, good. Yeah, and anybody. I'll just a shout out to um, John Mason as well, who did the interview on Pool Deck and stuff. And you could see his professionalism. Like he held, uh, 100%. It, he held it really well, let, it didn't cut him off, um, let, him, let him do his speech. And, the, and same with Michael Andrew. Michael and and, and actually, my, my thought too was like, man, this is kind of ironic. Like Michael Andrew's standing right next to him, and he's clearly been vocal about Israel. Yeah, and um, 
I, I, my, the thought that ran through my head was like, what was Michael Andrew thinking when this was happening? And I didn't go back and look at the video again, but I thought he was actually like kind of acknowledging him and knowing Michael Andrew, I'm sure he'd, he'd, uh, he'd be thoughtful, you know, but, um, anyways, yes, there was big political politicized stuff going on the podiums at, at the world aquatic swim meet. Well, I think we've got both sides of it, and that's what you want in a situation like this. I think we've got to look at both sides. Um, yeah, you know, that was a, that was definitely a positive. But yeah, never what a dull else? moment in the swimming world. <laughs> never yes, a dull crazy. Moment. Yes. All right. Anything? On. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? We're, We're in ratings. Budapest. We're in Budapest this weekend, the final stop of the World Cup, and we have the Golden Race. What's the golden race? The golden race is this new thing at the end of the swim meet. Okay. If you win any of the 100s, then you get a ticket to the golden race. Mm. Right? It's just like Willy Wonka. <laughs> All right. Then these four guys and four gals are going to line up and they're going to swim <laughs> against each other, but they have to swim their respective strokes handicapped by the differential in time. Mm. So. What? Chin Hai Yang's going to go first because he's breaststroker and breaststroker is slow. Everyone knows it's the worst stroke. Okay. He gets to go first. And then whoever many seconds Thomas Chacon wins the 100 backstroke by minus the uh, uh, Chin's 100 breaststroke time that he's going to get sent off. So there's going to be making four. This up? No, <laughs> no. I couldn't make this shit up. This okay. is brilliant. Is it based on your world records or like how no, they it's just do off that? the winning he times? So, so Chin needs to win the individual as slow as he possibly can. He needs to go like yeah. 59-0 yes, and just exactly. slip the win. Because there's actually they didn't I, I don't want to say big money. There is money on the line. Twelve dollars. Sure. Apparently, there's money. That's what they said. They haven't announced how much money. They've not announced how much money. Hundred percent correct. If you're really paying attention, you are. If you're Chin, you're going 59-0 and winning by a tenth. You Is this know? what I need to do with Sonny today with the golden race? I need to give him a, a head start? What? How have you interpreted anything he just said and taken it to the race? It's where... the golden race today. Why do I need a head start? Okay, I mean, obviously, handicap. you're the slowest person, so I've got to give you a handicap. <laughs> hey, what do you get for winning the golden race? Yeah. You get money. Cash, How baby. Cash. Are we they, putting they cash on this said. today, Brett? Yeah, cash is on this. We're putting cash. Okay. Who yeah. You, guys, who are you betting on? Me or Brett? I'm betting on Sonny. Oh, hold on. Blocks or no blocks? <laughs> I love Megan. Look at this. Blocks or no blocks? Sonny, I love you, man, but you got to get that rating up. The rating's not quick enough. Rate 60 the whole way. All right, I'm all about the 60 rate. One, let's, one. let's just see now. Let's see now. Go, go, go. Put it what? There, put it Mate, there. it's not a freaking bodybuilding contest. It it's about who can pull the most water. It's power. Look at it's that. Power Look at that little though. thing. Power that little to thing going to be that. Weight ratio. That little thing. It's like a Formula One against a, a Toyota. Mate, right? it's one all. <laughs> Come on, you're the separator. Come on. I know you... I know he's your boy, but come on, be, be honest here. Are we you're going blocks or there's no blocks? There's, there's no, no blocks. blocks. It's from push. a push. It's from a push, not even from a dive off the coping. We're not, no, it's backyard throwdown. It's from the push. Same as with Cavage. Same as with Michael. What does that say? Oh, Brett's taking the win 100%. Oh, oh wow. Look block at him, that. Nate. Block him. Block Swazza. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> block Swazza. Swazza, baby. Productions. Nate, just cover. make a call. Come no, on, Nate. Nate. Uh, I'm taking my boy hockey. Boom! Oh! <laughs> oh, There's two losers in this chat, uh, or three losers. Oh. Megan, we're gonna we're gonna ride off into the sunset as winners. <laughs> Come oh, on, that's mate. It. I'm out. I gotta go. All right, guys. Peace. We'll see you later. Uh, get that rating up. See get the rating up, pal. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. I like it. Glossy.